Zimbabwe. Welcome to our first episode of Farming 263. I'm Audrey Shamiara and I'm a presenter today. We are at New Start Children's Home and we have two young farmers, Mr. Khan and Mr. Tondarai. They're going to take us through the course of everything and show us what they're doing here so that we can, you know, learn something and enjoy. We are now at the greenhouse where we are going to meet Mr. Khan. So please stay tuned. Hello, Mr. Khan Alma. Hi. I'm Audrey Shamiarida and I'm a presenter today. Yes. You're going to take me through what you're doing with the greenhouse and everything else at the yeah. I'd love to tell you more about what we're doing here. Okay, so you can go ahead. Okay, so I'm a farm manager at uh, New Start Children's Time. Okay. We live in a rural, um, an urban area in right. um, waterfalls. Oh, right. oh. And we have about 60 to 80 children who live at the children's home. Right. And we cater for them at our greenhouses. With, uh, fresh vegetables, fresh tomatoes, and uh, we teach them how to do farming at the same time. Oh, okay. So basically, this is all about taking care of the children, mainly. That's your main goal for greenhouse. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. For now. For now, our main purpose mm -hmm. of the greenhouse is just to cater for uh, the children. Oh, but okay. We do hope to expand out our production so we can start producing enough tomatoes to feed our community around here as well because we do have a good market around here oh. but we have yet to tap into it oh okay yeah. that's good can you tell me more about mr Khan before we get into the greenhouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. okay okay so um i'm uh, in, i'm from new zealand originally. all right okay I'm from new zealand. Mm -hmm. so i volunteer for for farm stew all right which is two two words farm and stew uh -huh. and basically we, we train people in local communities to mm -hmm. have uh, abundant life and we teach them practical skills okay. which help them to you know, be self-sustaining and not dependent upon other people like oh. farming that's what we take on this kind of project we teach people how to be farming oh okay yeah. so now here you're teaching the students that's right I do. oh okay so you also teach other people just in general the general I community I do, yeah. oh we do okay. have training um, throughout the year mm -hmm. and we will, we will start doing training in the Harare area very soon. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll drop the details if you need more about the trainings, if you want to learn more from Mr. Khan. So now we are going to go with Mr. Khan into the greenhouse so he can take us through and teach us on what he's doing in the greenhouse. Thank you. Okay, so we can go. <clears throat> it's a bit hot in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> very, very hot. How long Okay, but, okay. Um, basically, I just walk you through it, and just go in, and we'll just come back out. And I'll just tell you a few things about the gelatin, about the pivot that we Alright, okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's go. Jason, welcome to our greenhouse. As you can see, we have trellis and systems. We have um, four tomatoes. Alright. We have crops which are currently growing. Alright. Yeah, so we rotate these throughout the year. So after these tomatoes start to get more degrees, we mm -hmm. start planting them over here. Oh, you switch, you be switching sides. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So usually when are they attacked with diseases? So do you go for the first planting, the second one? The first one will be okay. The second one will be okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, usually uh, when it gets to like maybe that size over there, right. the, the leaves will start getting a lot more disease pressure on them. Oh. So the disease pressure will start to come up here. Thankfully, uh, we've been organically farming here for so long, for okay. the past two years now, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing an, an improvement in our soil so much. The fertility of the soil has just gotten so much better. Okay, so you use organic yeah. ways, organic fertilizers, organic everything. Exactly. We make our own fertilizers, we make our own compost to treat, add to our soil to improve our soil. Oh, okay. So where do you get your organic fertilizers? I can actually show you where we get that. Oh, okay. So welcome to our greenhouse. Okay. This is where we have our nursery. Right. And we also grow more tomatoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is our nursery. Right. Yeah, we grow all our um, transplants here. Right. This is cabbage. Yeah. Cabbage. And then? Uh, this is uh, pepper. Pepper. pepper, and we have Eggplant. eggplants, tomatoes, tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this key now. <laughs> All of this. This is. Yep. This is more tomatoes. More tomatoes. Yep. More tomatoes. More tomatoes. Okay. And this, this is sunga. Mm -hmm. 
and broccoli. All right. Swiss chard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are the varieties of the tomatoes which you're using? Yeah, so these are an uh, a determinant variety. Okay. Do you understand what that means? Determinant and in, in, in de indeterminate. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, but you can explain. Okay, sure. So a determinate variety basically will grow for a determinate amount of time. <laughs> basically. So it'll get to a certain height and it'll stop growing. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, but indeterminate, like what we do here, these are all indeterminate. Oh, okay. They will continue to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. yeah. So you can trellis it really well. Yeah, okay. well so where do you get your seeds? Your seeds? Yeah, all these seeds uh, we actually bought them from Seedco. Yeah, oh, okay. I think these ones. Um, um, yeah. These ones. I can't remember the name of this the company now. Oh, okay, no, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, I can't remember the name of this. So now, can you tell me about the medium you're using for your float trees? Yeah, float sure. Trees, yeah. So we have a medium of vermiculite mixed with pine bark. Alright. Yeah, as well as compost. So compost. you mix those three together. So you mix those three together. Yeah. And yeah. it works perfectly fine. It looks really good. The thing about um, mediums is that you want to have a nice uh, component, like a, a mixture mm -hmm. of materials. You, mm -hmm. you don't want it to be too dense. You want it to be nice and uh, soft so then the water can, can go through. And the yeah. seed can easily... But at the same time, mm -hmm. you also want it to be uh, move material that will hold the, the moisture for a long time as well. Oh, all yeah. right. So that's why we use vermiculite, we use pine bark, which holds the water for a long um, time. All right. So what yeah. do you use to water? Uh, right now we're just using watering cans. Oh, watering yeah. cans and then you just water. Oh, <laughs> exactly. I'm hoping to expand okay, to micro jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, is that aloe vera? Yeah, yeah. Well? We grow aloe vera. Yeah. Okay. What do you use it for? Um, aloe vera is usually a topical plant, topical mm -hmm. herb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we use it for burns, for cuts, for cuts scrapes and, and things like that. Exactly. You know kids are playing around. <laughs> I know. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. Okay, so please take me to okay. the bag. Do you want to know about this variety? No, not the variety, but you okay. just tell me what's there, what's okay. there, what's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now we're rotating these beds. So next, next time we're going to put tomatoes in here. Okay. Yeah. So I will put the tomatoes in th that one over there for two times, and then I'm going to put just tomatoes in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. That's it stops the disease enough. pressure. All right. Yeah. Okay, so what do you use for disease control? So we use organic methods of d disease control. Okay, for yeah. example, this kind of disease. Yeah, yeah. So for fungal diseases, mm -hmm. sometimes we use like, back, um, uh, what do they call it? But baking, I, sorry. Yeah. Uh, fungal diseases, mm -hmm. usually we'll use baking soda mm -hmm. mixed with soap, mm -hmm. or you can also use like uh, milk which is sour. Mm -hmm. and you can put one, one um, liter of milk for 10 liters of water. 10 liters of water. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you, you spray just that. Spray that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. it works perfectly fine. It does work quite well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was for fungal. How about yeah. insects? Insects. Um, Commonly, we have aphids, right? Yeah. Aphids exactly. are a big issue. <laughs> a very yeah. big issue. Big okay, issue for so us. What do you use? Uh, we use soap. Soap? Yeah. Like what kind of soap? Like dish soap. Dish soap? Yeah, so we just mix a tablespoon of dish soap to five liters of water mm. and we mix so that. Yeah, you just spray it. You just spray it? Yeah. And it works perfectly fine you, after a few. Yeah, you may have to spray it a couple of times. A couple of and times. also, what happens is it, it disrupts their uh, life cycle because you'll spray them and they start sliding and things like that. Oh, yeah. okay. I've also heard of people using wood ash as well. Wood ash? Because it cuts them. It's so fine that it cuts the skin of the, the insects. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So they will use wood ash and put it in water and just spray it as well. Exactly, Ooh, yeah. Okay. Just I'll make it fine. Together. All right, thank you. Yeah. So we can go to the organic food. Okay, guys, now we're going to learn about the fertilizer that they use. Guys, please stay tuned. This is amazing. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Ken, yeah. let's move. Okay, so here we have our comfrey plants. Comfrey plants? Yeah, yeah comfrey. Okay, all right. Yeah. We use it for fertilizer. So basically, we take the leaves and put it into a bucket. For how long? For three weeks. For three weeks yeah. only? Yeah, and we mix it with water. That? So after that, we use it as a top dressing. A, all right. a, you know, they call it like a, a liquid uh, fertilizer. Liquid yeah. fertilizer, okay, okay. They, they can be quite costly, mm. but if you can make it yourself, then it's right. even better. So I how do you get to this plant? Does it have seedlings or what? Yeah, so you can take cuttings from the roots. 
Oh, yeah. you take cuttings from the roots. Exactly. Does it grow big or it just stays like this? You'll be cutting the leaves and just yeah. shaping it from there. This we planted about three weeks ago three and weeks it's, ago. it's growing like really big. Hey, it the, grows fast. Some, I've seen leaves that grow like this long that sometimes. Long? Yeah. Okay. They grow really big. I think this is a good plant. So, what mm. properties does it have? Med nutrients? Like medicinally, mm -hmm. we don't eat it. It's not, good, not it. good to eat. Yeah. Okay. But you can use it for broken bones and sprains mm -hmm. so you can like I give it to people I take the leaf I mash it up mm -hmm. and then I add it as a poultice onto the skin okay yeah. so just for three weeks and you <laughs> you actually see the change after how long Is well it usually it's like on a action? day like I've, I've had a broken ankle before sprained oh. ankle and I was about to take a flight the next day and then I put a poultice of that on my ankle oh. and I could fly the next day okay how yeah. about on crops when do you see the change after oh. spraying the water? okay so talking about fertilizer you put this onto your crop um, mm -hmm. one day and uh, every, every second week you want to start applying one cup onto each plant All right. yeah. uh -huh. and talking about tomatoes you want to have one one um, can, you know, the baked bean cans. All right. You add one one of those one uh, onto each plant station, oh, and geez. the dilution rate mm -hmm. of it is one liter for ten liters of water. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the one in which you would have stayed for three weeks, you take one liter of that water and mix yep. it with ten liters of water, exactly. and then you start applying on each plant. Exactly. So for tomatoes, how how often do you do that? Like for. Yep. A growing season. How often do you do that? Yeah, so every two weeks. After every yeah. two weeks. You can you add the first one on the when it starts to flower. Oh, when yeah. it starts it to help, flower. It help the fruit to set. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. Oh, this is good, guys. I <clears> hope <throat> you've learned something. You should leak for this crop. And I also had you sell these. These. Okay. We produce we produce um, comfrey as well, mm -hmm. and we take cuttings and we sell it at a local market. Oh, yeah. okay, so you actually have your nursery for this? Yep. Oh, okay, let's go to the nursery again. So yes, yeah, so this is our nursery here, and um, as you can see, we have chicken manure soup here. This is another type of fertilizer that we use when my comfrey is not producing. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so you same put thing. Chicken, chicken manure, manure mm -hmm. into a sack, mm -hmm. and then you just close it, and yep. then you put water. We put it with water, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then you just spray it as well. Yeah, we do the exact same thing we do for the comfrey. Oh, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. So talking about the comfrey though, let me show you my the bucket here. Oh. This, this is where we put the comfrey in it. Uh, so as you can see, this mm. is okay, so the, that's comfrey. the comfrey. Yeah. So this is now ready to be used. Right. And, oh. uh, so the leaves are underneath. The exactly, the leaves are inside there. All it's right. now mature I can start adding it to my crop yeah I can yeah. smell it it's, it's pungent isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. yeah and let me show you around the nursery as well you can go okay. first oh thank you you're welcome <clears throat> yeah so comfrey <laughs> this is uh this is our production so far so you just put the seedlings into a paper and uh huh uh huh. You just start from there. No flow trays, no nothing. Ah uh, no, oh, no flow okay. trays. You just put them into the bags. Do you have a little seedling? I just want to see. Um, there's some more over here. here. I can't show you. Um, this one it doesn't sit very well. So this is the so comfrey root. The roots. Yeah. So what do you do? You just cut them and replant them and everything. Yeah. Usually I try to keep at least one, one plant on each cutting. All right. Yeah. But it will also grow out of uh, a root. So if you take that root off there, mm -hmm. you put that into the ground and you water it for a while, then it's going to create new shoots like this. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are flowers, right? Yeah, I, was tr I did a bit of an experiment, tried to do some succulents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what are these? Uh, that's parsley cuttings. Uh, no, uh, not parsley, sweet basil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to experiment. So, Audrey, would you like to come learn more about farmster? Okay, that's okay. fine. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Oh, this is a pretty nice house. Yeah, this is where I live. Mm. Basically. I, I could sleep here yeah. for days. <laughs>
Okay. Yes, sir. So tell me more. So yeah, Farm Stew is an organization which is basically made up of two words, farm and stew. Oh, right. Yeah. Farm and stew. Farm stew, stew. Like stew stew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. a stew is in, you know, you're cooking and it's basically a community idea. Oh, right. So we go to local churches and communities mm -hmm. and equip them and train them in um, the fundamentals of the recipe of abundant life. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like any recipe, you want to share it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything good we want to share. So let me show you a bit more about what Farms2 actually is, because right. it's an acronym. You know? right, yeah. Show me more. So. <clears throat> is this a good shot? Right. Yeah, it's really good. OK. So, so farming, attitude, rests, meals, sanitation, temperance, enterprise, and water is the ingredients for the recipe of abundant life. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So tell me more. What do you do with water? So we draw, we, we help people to have clean water. Because you know, Audrey, in many places in Zimbabwe, people don't have access to good clean water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So we improve that by drilling boreholes and also educating about how they can make dirty water clean. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. And then meals? Cooking demonstrations, we teach people how to have a nutritious diet, you know, mm -hmm. and add a variety of foods into their diet, not just having the sadza, okay. but also including oh, a right. variety of... Greenhouse, it is a variety of things. Exactly, yeah. All right, oh, that's good. And then attitude? Yeah, attitude. So one thing we find is a lot of people have a negative mindset, you know, mm -hmm. so we help them to really give that to, give that away, you know, and okay. to receive the rest and uh, have an abundant life because stress and oh, problems of life. Do you also offer counselling sessions and everything? Do you serve that um, we do, yes. Oh, we okay. we offer, offer some counselling to people who are depressed and we give them counsel on, on how they can change their lifestyle and different things in order to improve their, their okay, mentality. And yeah. So we're all about equipping people, you know, we don't like, mm -hmm. like handing pe things out to people. Right. So that's why we train people how to do agriculture and how to do cooking demonstrations and things like that. So they can add value to the products that they make. Alright, yeah. and then coming to farming. Of course, we, we love teaching people about organic, sustainable farming. Yeah, sustainable small, especially farming. small hold farmers. Oh, okay. So we do trainings in, in people's um, communities yeah. and we teach them how to do the methods which we use here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically, which crops do you teach people? Any crop? We teach about fruits, mm -hmm. legumes, mm -hmm. we teach about leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. and um, we also teach about uh, root crops as well. Oh, root yeah. crops as well. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty a wide variety of stuff you teach them. So yeah. where can we find you as farm stew? You know, I really need counseling, yeah. you know, I really need to know more about legumes, I need to do this. I heard about this. Where can we find you? How can we get in contact with you to actually do something like you. So you can do that in a couple of ways. You can mm -hmm. contact me directly and I'll share with you my, my phone number right. so your viewers can, can contact me. Okay. And also we have an online training class right. available mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to learn about the curriculum. We have an online curriculum which goes through every single one of these and has jam-packed full of information so you can learn more about each one of these. That's good. Yep. Okay, so and for your programs, where can you see that you're going to Mabugu to do something, you're going to this place to do something? How can you know about that? Where do you post or anything? Yeah, so we do have um, social media, WhatsApp groups as well. Oh, WhatsApp groups? Yep, yep. Yeah, that's good. So we have WhatsApp groups for people who are interested in, in doing the trainings. Mm -hmm. So I, if anyone's interested, again, just text me and I can give you their information. The yeah. information. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. So we're going to share his number so that you can get in contact with them so that you can learn more. You know, this is something you really need. Okay, guys, so I hope you learned as well. I learned a lot of stuff, especially the point of the country plant. You guys should get in touch with Mr. Khan. This is something you really need to try and work on as well and tell us the results. Okay, so coming, we're done with the greenhouse and I hope you learned a lot of stuff. And now we're going to the open field. I hope you can see the view from here. Guys, this is such a nice place. You should just visit, you know, it's a children's home. You can actually come and donate your stuff and everything. This is quite a good place to B, you get it. And the one highlight of the day, I also learned about farm stew. Please let me get my board. <laughs> Thank you. This farm stew is an organization which 
helps you to get an abundant life guys just look at this farming they teach you attitude they have counseling sessions and then meals they actually give you more recipes we're just used to sadza beef sadza beef i hope you saw the greenhouse it has a wide variety of items some items are actually like hey you know what guys you should come and actually learn for yourself and watch this episode thoroughly and get in contact with mr ken and also get to learn about these new techniques that we learned about today thank you very much okay guys now we're done with the greenhouse now we're going to the open fields and we're going to meet the open field manager who's mr tunderai okay so now i'm with mr tunderai hello mr tunderai how are you i'm good are thanks you? i'm odd i'm Mr. Tundere. Mr. Tundere. Uh -huh. Okay, nice to meet you. So please, can you take me through what you're doing in your open field? Okay, me? we have uh, different kind of vegetables that we okay. grow in, in the in the open field. Mm -hmm. We have onions and we have also cabbages. Mm -hmm. We can do also cucumbers outside, but right. mostly we look at what people need the what most. People need. Yeah, All right. because we know people need onions. Mm -hmm. They need uh, vegetables. Mm -hmm. As you know, we all need to eat sadza. Yeah, so those things okay. we need them each and every day all right they're a necessity yes all right oh that's good okay so these are onions mm -hmm. and then this is cucumbers. we have cucumbers so yeah. you're using drip irrigation yes. for your plants mm -hmm. okay so tell me more about drip irrigation okay for the drip irrigation mm -hmm. it's um we use our water efficient efficiently yeah all right because we can water only where the plant is all with right. the drip Okay. Instead of using I the like sprinklers, it pours water everywhere All right, it and it causes the weeds to grow everywhere. everywhere. But if you water like only on the, on the plant, like if you look at the onions, All right. they are divided like we have 30 centimeters apart. Uh -huh. So in every hole we put an onion there and it is watered well. Okay. You can open your water maybe mm -hmm. for an hour and it will be watery without do and you are doing something else. Okay. You don't have to be always there. Okay, it's fine. So, okay, I jumped the stage. Mm -hmm. I really need to know, Mr. Tundra, what made you to be in this place you are today doing farming? Okay. Yes. Um, my profession was um, to be an engineer, and I went to school, and I did my electrical engineering. You actually finished I everything. finished everything. <laughs> so, okay. I love electrical work again, but my heart wasn't most into electrical. Mm -hmm. I was uh, into farming. Into farming. Yeah. Right? So I started this doing the farming I think three years ago. All right. At this place. Oh, <laughs> so we we are doing the vegetable garden and also the maize, beans, and everything. All right. Yeah. And it's mainly for the children. It's mainly for the children. So you actually have a bond with the children. You actually teach them and everything. Yes. Day. Yes. Oh, okay. It's How like many every, kids? Do you have? We have a hundred kids here. Hundred kids. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know. Mostly young people like me, mm -hmm. they want to learn at school and have a degree, but to put hands on, hands on it's, it's kind of difficult. difficult. So I'm here to just help them to know they can use their hands and they can survive. Even if they kind of maybe have no focus in education, okay. but if they know how to use their hands, they can be someone else. Okay, so tell me more. What is this plant we have here? Okay, this one we have, uh, we call this red cabbage. Mm -hmm. Mostly they use it for salads. Right, yeah, yes, yes, they yes. can mix it uh, with uh, the other type of uh, cabbage that you know, which oh, is not red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can mix it to make the, you know, your plate should be a rainbow color with different colors. All right. All right. So this is there to make your maybe your meal look appetizing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. So you get your seedlings from the greenhouse. Greenhouse. Mm -hmm. All right, that, that's interesting. And then which type of seed is this variety? Um, this one is, um, actually this one I'm not sure because I got it from someone that I'm trying. It's a kind of an experiment that oh, we are doing. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I want to know how it, is it good for this soil that we have here or mm -hmm. it's not good for this soil. Okay, so what type of soil do you have? This is kind of a mix. Uh, we have a sand soil and loam soil. Loam soil. Yeah. If you look uh -huh. at this sand, uh, the soil okay, that is yeah. here, this is a bit it's kind of different, right? Mm -hmm. But mostly I use um, organic. When I say organic, I use compost more instead right. of using fertilizer and everything. and everything. So the compost is there to make the soil rich mm -hmm. and to neutralize everything that is needed in the what in the soil in the plant. Mm -hmm. So I use compost most of the time, and it makes my soil rich and different from other soil that you see. Yeah. 
Okay, so you actually work with sandy soil yes, sometimes. To bring so something it's else. more of sandy than loamy soil. Yes. Here. Okay guys, I hope you got that part correctly. Sandy soils, you can actually do something with them. I know a lot of people just think clay soils are the best. But look at this guy. Look at these cabbage, cabbages. They're actually very healthy. And he is using organic ways of raising his plants. So you guys should go green. So now tell me more. This is what? This is kovo. Kovo. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And then I'm seeing a lot of grass here. So tell me more. What's happening with the grass? Okay. In the grass um, that is there, we use, that is called mulch, right? Mm -hmm. The mulch, is, we have some benefits from that. Mm -hmm. Especially this time of the season, it's very hot. Yeah. And if you water your plants, maybe in the morning, you need to keep the moisture underneath. Mm -hmm. And the mulch is there to not allow the water to be, to be taken by like the evaporation. Right. So it's there to give long time with mulch, uh, with moisture in the soil. Okay, so how do you decide, could it, this crop is for the greenhouse, this crop is for the open field. Okay. How do you get to that decision as the farm managers? Okay, uh, our decision, uh, we mostly in the greenhouses, we use them for tomatoes, as you mm heard -hmm. before, mm -hmm. right? And um, the tomatoes, they don't do well in the courses and like, out in the open field. All right, in the open field. Yeah, so we decided to use the greenhouses for only the tomatoes. Only the and tomatoes. if you put this in the greenhouse, it's, it's, it's pointless. It's you can see how, how big it, uh -huh. it grows. They're doing and if well. you put them in the greenhouse, it's just pointless, you know? Okay. And, um, our vegetables here, if you go to the other gardens and everything, mm. the leaves are not very big. Mm -hmm. These stems, they are very big and healthy. Yeah, they are very big, I can see that. They are very big. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it needs a lot of sunshine. It needs a lot of attention. Oh, like right. in the greenhouse, yeah, you can plant, but it, it grows fast and it doesn't bring that natural taste natural that we taste need from it. this. Alright, yeah. okay. I understand. Okay, now let's go. So now we are on these beds. Please tell me more. How do you? How, how, why did you put these? What are they called? Okay. Are these still the, the pegs. We call yeah, them like pegs. these. I call them my permanent pegs. Okay. Why? Because once my bed is made, I don't want to repeat the same again, measuring and measuring, measuring and measuring time. every time. Mm -hmm. So I just take my string and put them on one peg to the other end, and then come back. And then when I want to make my bed look nice, I just follow that string that I've, I've, what I've put and okay. it brings something like this. Okay, and then I can also notice that your bed is a bit wider mm -hmm. than the normal beds I've seen. So what, what's the reason of you making the beds a bit wider? Okay, the reason for me to make these beds wider, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, also plants need to need their air mm -hmm. and they need to have freedom of doing whatever they want to do. Mm. Social so distance. they need social distance, <laughs> just like what we are having right now. <laughs> so okay. they, they need also that. You can, you can look at, at that kofo. Mm -hmm. It's growing mm -hmm. very well and it has really big, well. big, big, big leaves because it has that area of doing whatever it wants. Freedom of yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see uh, my beds are kind of wide mm -hmm. and it gives me like room to work in my oh. bed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to put here? What are you planning? On this one I'm planning to put... Um, uh, peas. Peas. Yeah. Okay. Hey, these kids are healthy. Yeah. yeah. Mm, the crops I've seen here. Yeah. Okay, and this is also onion. These are onions. They are ready to be harvested. Right. Ready to be harvested. Yes. So you actually harvest bit by bit, or you the, just have this um, all at once. This coming on Monday tomorrow, actually, I'm going to take all the onions out and put them somewhere so that they will dry and then use them for other future. Like the, uh, last year, okay. you you won't believe it. Last year, I only like planted, um, I think it was 10 beds. Mm -hmm. And from those 10 beds from onions, we got like 2.5 tons of oh onions. God. And now you have how many? And beds? now we have like here, we have like two, four, six, seven. Mm -hmm. And down there, we have again, I think three more. Three so they will bring like 10. So ten. I hope it's going to bring something which something is. Something like yeah. that. Oh my God. Yeah, this is really good. This is really, really good. Oh, I learned the theory part today. Now I want to learn the practical part. So what are we doing today? Right now we want to make our bed to look beautiful. Okay, like yes. those ones we saw. Yes. Okay. Because whatever you do, you should be pleased mm -hmm. by looking at it. Right. It should be attractive. Yes. So that's what we want to do right now. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. Let's yeah. prepare the land. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do at first? At we first, first rake. We, we first rake our bed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We first rake it so that we can make it level. All right. 
and then now you can bring maybe the outer all right now Send i'm bringing here. the outer yeah hey. okay just like that just like perfect that. all right perfect okay ah this is good guys i'm gonna finish the whole of it alone <laughs> <laughs> that's it okay all right Okay, so tell me more about this project. I see it's a small project actually mm -hmm. fit for a family. Mm -hmm. This is like a backhead mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, something oh, like that. Okay, tell me more. Well, for this one, you can put different type of vegetables mm -hmm. in this small portion. Mm -hmm. Here we have tsunga, we have mm -hmm. cabbage, we have our tomatoes there, mm -hmm. we have our onions there, we have our kovo there, right? right? So you can put like uh, different type of vegetables. Each day you can eat different type of vegetables. We can come here, you can take like one, two, three, four, five, or six, seven leaves and you're going, you going to be good enough to eat. Yes, yes. You can go there to kovo, you can get maybe five again leaves, you can cut them and you're good. Onions is there. You don't have to go and buy. It just only take like only a few seeds to you, for you to do this. All right. This is quite good. This is urban farming. Right? Yeah. Mm. And for those that maybe worry about the chemicals, right? Maybe you can see maybe the disease and everything like aphids. Okay. I have planted garlic here. The use of this garlic is just it's not just to be there. It's it, be it has a use. Why it is there? Garlic it chases away aphids. So actually you can use a natural remedy for treating aphids. You can take the garlic, boil it, and then use that water to spray where the... A little bit yeah, on the plants. On the plants. All right. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is also a nice... Yeah, that's uh, candela tomatoes. Candela tomatoes. And those are rotted tomatoes. Yeah, rotted tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. So what do you have to say with someone who's staying in the urban areas in this time of COVID-19 where you're restricted of moving around. You can even eat without vegetables because the shops are closed. Mm -hmm. Please tell us more. Inspire someone. Okay. Mm -hmm. To those that are living in urban areas, you can have something like this mm -hmm. and you don't have to go out to go and buy vegetables and you don't have to waste your time or maybe your energy to just go out. Mm -hmm. You just have to use the energy plant in a small garden like this. Yeah, it's really And you can too. live. And you know, it's so beautiful to eat something that you grow with your own hands. Wow, yeah, yeah. That's how uh, hip I am, like, you know, working with these plants and every day you come here, you see how, how beautiful they are. All right. You can make That's friends good. with this plant and you'll be good to Hello, go. Hello, urban people. I hope you learned something from this small garden. Instead of you going, you know, running around looking for vegetables, looking for tomatoes, please grow something and have this it, it's very small it's like a backyard thing so guys please do something with your own hands it's really nice okay guys so now we're going to the panel where we have agricultural experts who are going to tell us more and analyze and criticize about how what's happening on this children's home in terms of farming where we were at the open field and at the greenhouse and try and help these two gentlemen in order for them to grow more, in order for them to produce more for their children and even more for the market around waterfalls. As Mr. Khan said, he has market, plenty of market here, but now he has to produce more in order to meet the target of what the market requires. Thank you very much, guys. So stay tuned and learn more from the panel. Hello Zimbabwe, my name is Deidrim Gaza and I'm going to be your host on the second segment of Farming 263. I'm joined by uh, agriculture experts in Nekin. First question is directed to the agriculture economist on how Mr. Khan's enterprise is impacting the community, be it positively or negatively. Uh, hello Zimbabwe, I'm Tafaz Vashoko, a student at the University of Zimbabwe, doing agriculture economist. Following up on the visit that we had at Mr. Khan's farm, uh, we can see that the model of farming that he is using, which is more like subsistence farming, is benefiting the children which are at the place where he is doing his farming practices. 
are getting their feed, their food from the produces that they are doing at the farm. So that one is all is benefiting both the children at the farm and also the community at large. Since that was one of us, we have to take out from that farm setup. Yes, noted. And also, I have a question for you, the agriculture economist. What are the benefits for a farmer to first look for the market before producing? Uh, the, the, the most benefits for a farmer to first look for the market before doing his farming practices that he can also be able to reduce post farm losses. Because post farm losses, some of the losses that farmers in case, especially for a farmer like Mr. Kano, who are going to be perishables. They would have not enough market, there was not enough market research. I'm not going to produce some produce, then they end up a war. As now, the many shortage of market. So it's very vital to do market research before doing your farming activities in a farm. I think this I think this can benefit future farmers. So my second question is directed to the agriculture engineer. So as you noticed, Mr. Khan is actually using both open field and greenhouse. So what are the advantages of using greenhouse when you're doing plant productivity? All right, thank you. Hello, Zimbabwe. I'm Ford Marcus, an agricultural engineering student at the University of Zimbabwe. The greenhouse has some of these advantages when growing plants. It regulates the, envir the environmental factors such as temperature and humidity to the optimum requirements for the growth of the crops. So how are we so sure? Like for instance, when I learned about uh, plant productivity, there is the use of photosynthesis in plant production. That is, the sunlight is also needed. So how does greenhouse have that, all those benefits? All right. It's not all about sunlight in photosynthesis. The aspect is light. What required is light. Although in our greenhouse, there is the penetrance of sunlight there will be always light in the greenhouse, so it has good acidity. Uh, Mr. Khan is using drip irrigation. What are the advantages of using drip irrigation? Why didn't you use uh, other types of irrigation systems that we have? Oh, thank you. To look at drip irrigation, you know, but here, to compare drip irrigation and overhead irrigation, drip irrigation, you know, safe and fly, we are doing it now. We are you know, in the straight to the crop. Drip irrigation, no bad trash recurry to minimize my weeds and other diseases that are waterborne as it will be watered direct to the plant to the soils. So drip irrigation, to know one each bachelor child to save a bread, we yaga chipa. It's compared to the overhead irrigation and my methods are gavapo. Thank you very much. My third question, or oh, my third panelist, is the crop scientist. So there are gaps in the farming production. Uh, as an agronomist, what are the good practices that Mr. Khan is doing in his farming career? Hello, Zimbabwe. My name is Bob Mizumitinao. I'm studying agronomy. So. Uh, as we saw from the video from Mr. Khan's production on what he's doing in the house, uh, we can notice that he mentioned an issue of using certified seed. This is unlike a person Arkuyenda or no Shinida Madomase Ake in a garden or something. Because a certified seed, you know, we are in a ma, what can we say, my characteristics are in good. Unlike seed, because sometimes it's carrying my diseases. But if we use certified seed, I my diseases, I ninge ichitakura, which means it is good and to go cut my cost, it was retaining my chemicals, and it's also complementing my economics. And we can we can also notice that hamuna ma diseases in the greenhouse now shirukuba from the seed as we saw also varuko produce ma seedlings our vega muma chase akutori na ma diseases 
Saka it all starts from producing seedlings. Edu, Tonya to produce uh, my plants. Edu, I think I clean asinama diseases. So not just from the farmer. Varuku it a good land preparation in which varuku clear my weeds. That is mechanically, our school uses my herbicides because this is organic farming we are talking about here. So, Muma plants are our nozzle producer, Munama residues, and my chemicals, and then also Pama fertilizers are our Kushandisa. Our school no tenga ma fertilizers, they are also cutting the cost. They are using the camphrey plant, and then they are also using chicken droppings, chicken manure. They use the plant, the extract zone from the chicken manure and the camphrey plant. These are the fertilizers that they are using, such that their plants grow well and these plants are not being starved because this is organic farming. But they are being well fed, even though Pasinama fertilizers are not out there. And then to also avoid my pest, I can say my aphids, they are spraying baking soda muma plants awo ari mu greenhouse which means it's something chiri common you know one come back baking soda so they can just take baking soda in the house and then they just prepare it and they spray their plants as we have seen in zimbabwe there's now a rise in organic farming so my question is now directed to our environmentalists that we have on the panel what are the advantages of farmers partaking in organic farming Hello Zimbabwe, my name is Melody Maofa, studying Applied Environmental Sciences at the University of Zimbabwe. As we noted from Mr. Kane, uh, we realized that he's using more of organic manure instead of synthetic fertilizers. Uh, organic manures are environmentally friendly, that is, uh, they, are, they have reduced health effects uh, instead of using synthetic fertilizers. Uh, where we get um, diseases like ma obesity and other related diseases. But no na kutika kwa kana kusina kanga niswa. And again, uh, ma organic manures they are very beneficial to the environment whereby they improve the soil structure. We have heard from our experts and I have learned a lot. Uh, for instance, we should have certified seeds when we're doing our farming practices. And also our engineer told us, uh, told us about the importance of greenhouse, irrigation system, our environmentalists and also our economists. So I hope you guys back at home have also learned a lot from this show and I hope you get to do self practices of farming and i want to thank our panelists uh, for partaking uh, in this show and also i would like to thank uh, our sponsor that is agriculture student network a club from the university of zimbabwe which is run by agriculture students